Hey, Brad Kazmarski back here with Performance Pyramid and becoming a bodyweight badass. And last time I talked about the Performance Pyramid and the foundation of the pyramid. And I thought and just expressed that the movement screen is probably the best choice for being able to objectively look at where you, what you need to work on and how you figure out if it's trigger points, how you figure out if it's length or tension, and how you get to more control ultimately through the functional movement systems, which is FMS and the SFMA. So the first movement to look at if you're going to the FMS and there's no pain is the active straight leg raise. If you're going to the SFMA, it's from the neck down. From the FMS, it's from the bottom, bottom up. Um, there's just reasons for that functionally. This is Courtney right here. Um, so the first thing in the active straight leg raise is to look at is in this position with straight legs down, can you raise this up and back down, up and back down. So I'm clearly a three on that. I'm getting high enough. So being able to do the active straight leg raise is the basic way to look at the hip function or um, being able to do the hip hinge pattern in the FMS. If you want to look at a little bit more of it, we can go through some of the bigger breakouts and uh, at the end I'll put this all back together and explain how to be able to tell if it's length or tension issue, motor control, stability, figure that out. So I'm going to stand up in this position and go to a toe touch. So the first position of your chest test is a toe touch, just a standard toe touch. Feet together, reach down, get as far as you can in a toe touch. If someone has trouble with that and they cannot touch their toe, you're going to go to a unilateral toe touch. So in this case, you're going to put one foot up, elevated, and repeat, reaching for the down leg. And you're going to try both sides. So now, we're going to here, down leg. We're going to look at, can you do that now? So if you couldn't do a bilateral toe touch with the proper things I'll go over, and you could do it with one leg or not the other, then there's either a one-sided issue or probably a unilateral or a bilateral deficiency. So you can do it on one side but not the other. So bilaterally, something's deficient. From the breakdown from that, we're going we're gonna to strip it down even farther. So can you go to a seated toe touch? So now we're going less weight bearing. We've gone from standing, stacking our motor control, to de-stacking a little bit. And two things, can we touch our toes, seated, staying straight? And if this angle right here, which you can't really see, is this 80 degrees or greater? If it's less than 80, we're stuck back here. Now we're looking at more of a hip issue. We're trying to see if this is, is this hip, is this spine, or is this length? So if we're here, if I can get tall, above 80 degrees here, toe touch, that's gonna tell us some stuff too. So from that position, we go into the straight leg raise, and then we also go into both positions, we'll go here, can we take our knees to our chest? Fail, can't do it. Should we be able to get this to this right here? In this position, which is least weight bearing, and even in a weight, bear and even in a weight bearing position, can we sit this down? So it looks like it can, but actually I'm short here. So in this case for me, even though I can pass the straight leg raise and the toe touch, I have something going on right here which is impinging my hip that's stopping this flexion pattern. So when I take this into the deadlift pattern or the one leg RDL pattern, this is my issue more than the length. So mine is not a length issue, but someone else maybe. So we're going to look at it, is that a length? Is that a tension issue? Is that a hip issue? Is that a spine issue? Or is it just a hamstring issue? So I'm going to talk about that now. All right, now we're back to the board to try to explain what we just did and why. So again, first part of becoming a bodyweight badass is we have to objectively test our movement. And we're choosing to do that through the movement screen, so we did that. And the first pattern we're going to test is the active straight leg raise. That is where I laid on the ground and brought my leg up. For more information on that, go to functionalmovement.com or get the book or any of the info on that, and I'll put more on that as we go. But if you want more info on that, actually also Brett Jones and I just wrote an article on that, so hopefully that'll be out on strengthcoach.com um, and probably Brett Jones's website and functionalmovement.com. So for, if you can do this and like I did, but you should struggle taking that to the hip hinge pattern, that's what that article is about. If you need to now want to break out some more hybrid stuff, I'll give you versions of how to break this out and I won't get into all the info because that's more the SFMA, but I'll give you as much as I can about how to kind of put that into practice. So the hybrid breakout for the toe touch pattern is doing the toe touch. 
You pass the toe touch, good. If you don't pass the toe touch, but you can do both sides of the toe touch in the unilateral position. So foot up on block, can touch the left, can touch the right evenly, can't do the toe touch, we have a bilateral hip stability problem. It means our body in that position, motor control wise, can't stabilize it. We have a hip stability issue or motor control problem. If you can do one side and not the other, then you have a unilateral hip dysfunction. One side is causing more of an issue. Okay? If you can do both sides, but you can't do the toe touch, now we have more of a bilateral issue. And we'll get more into that a little bit. But just know that that's, this means more of a motor control issue. This means more of a, uni, a single side issue, although it could also be motor control. So right here, bilateral touch. Do both of them, but you can't do the toe touch. Weight bearing hip stability. Take that next test then into the seated toe touch. So if you can do the seated toe touch, but you can't do the standing toe touch, it means you have a weight bearing stability issue. That basically means that your body has the ability to do this, but when you stand it up, something goes off, motor control wise, just whatever motor control is a broad term, you can't do it. If you have, or if you can't do this, you might have limited hip flexion or limited spine mobility. Further breakouts will kind of tell you that. Limited hip flexion will also be the active straight leg raise test. Taking that into a prone rocking test, that's the, set, the last thing I did where I sat back, feet to butt, can tell you again if it's a limited hip flexion or limited spine mobility. And supine knees to the chest kind of also tells you if it's limited hip issue, okay? So these are some ways to break this down and to tell you, you can't, touch your, you can't do this test or you can't touch your toes, where could it be coming from? Is it bilateral or unilateral dysfunction? Is it weight bearing or a limited hip flexion or a limited spine mobility? Follow this breakout, it'll take you to where you need to go because you have to be able to move correctly first in the foundation before you can follow the performance period and become a bodyweight badass. So until next time, follow these things and enjoy seeing where it takes you and let me know. Thanks.